Hello comrades, it is I, TRZ Plays, and today we're going to be talking about the Queen Elizabeth class Super Dreadnought, I think they're called? Yeah, Super Dreadnought. Um, this is the special ship I was covering about. This is the special ship. Because uh, this ship actually holds sentimental value to me. Well, rather the ship class. Uh, the ship class involving Queen Elizabeth consists of uh, Queen Elizabeth, Valiant, Malaya, Barham, and I believe there was one that was under construction but never went anywhere. I think it went by the name Agincourt. I'll do more research on it because it's a very interesting ship to re the reason why it got cancelled. Because not, not even I know, to be honest. Probably because of lack of funding. Now, the reason why I said this thing holds sentimental value to me, this entire class, is because uh, I've had family serve on board two of the uh, Queen Elizabeth class battleships. Um, uh, I had my great grandfather on board Barham, and I've had his brother on board Malaya. Um, uh, unfortunately, we don't have what a Stockholm Queen Elizabeth looks like, so I'll probably just show a picture of what they were supposed to look like. In before they got this hideous, hideous upgrade, and. Uh, the history of the Queen Elizabeth is actually very, very vast. They were uh, super dreadnoughts. Eventually, they were such a big influence that the Germans actually built the Bayerns to counter them. And the French were too busy run stumbling on their own feet trying to figure out what a ship is. And uh, basically, they took part in pretty much, all, I pre pretty much every conflict in World War I and II. I think they, the Queen Elizabeth took part in Gallipoli, uh, Jutland, and also in um, World War II they played a heavy role. Well, rather the whole class as a whole. Uh, HMS Malaya was mostly doing convoy escorts. One of them, one of the convoy escorts, actually was involved in uh, scaring off the Scharnhorst and Neisnau. Because uh, the Germans weren't allowed to shoot at enemy capital ships. They were only attack supposed to attack merchant ships because the damage would be too expensive. Hence why, during the Battle of Jutland, in World War I, there were barely any other naval engagements besides the Eastern Front between uh, the uh, Central Powers and the Allies. Now, I could be wrong, because there was also um, a lot of things that we didn't talk about in World War I, but World War II history for the Queen Elizabeth is more around, more or less, beating the living hell out of the Italian Navy, such as attacking cruisers and uh, chasing the Vittoria Veneto. And, um, for, and probably the most popular of the Queen Elizabeths is the War Spite. Uh, so much so that it's actually a premium in this game, because why shouldn't it be? And also because it looks better. But uh, enough about the history. Eventually I'll cover it in more detail sometime in the future. And uh, let's talk about our commander, Andrew Cunningham. Probably the most popular British commander. Now... The British have a uh, gimmick of short fuse AP, which uh, kind of means that they just um, the armor piercing hits the target and just uh, has a very short fuse and detonates immediately. Which is why I decided to go with Jajard for the penetration. You'll see in the gameplay that I have that uh, Jajard really works on it like a charm on the British battleships, especially with Cunningham. You, do, you don't get the super heal with the whole Madden meme build that I have on Nelson, video coming soon. But with uh, the AP shell penetration multiplier being uh, very useful, especially with short fuse AP, it means you're just going to kick everything around like uh, trash. Then we have Otto Ciliax for Augur, the AP shell damage of your battleship. Now, this is actually very useful because uh, short fuse AP does a lot of damage to lightly armored targets, but not as much to heavy, which is why I recommend Ciliax. Now, let's start with the basics. He obviously has concentrated devastation, the shell grouping of battleship main guns. This is probably the best inspiration for pretty much all your battleships, if we're going to put it like that. Now, let's start talking about the skills. So, first skill, Flammable Cannoneer. Because of the um, HE shell damage, uh, no, sorry, that was different. <laughs> no. 
Flammable cannoneer increases the range and the shell grouping, not the flames. That goes to Madden and when we talk about burning everything to the ground. Then we have Crisscross, which increases the main battery traverse speed. You could run Kedrov, but not really worth it. Because Kedrov is more of a brawling main. Marksman for the accuracy. Granted, Rudder Shift is turning into that of a broken semi truck. And then we have Reaching Out XXL, which increases the maximum range of main battery. Obviously, you go for Will to Rebuild as your legendary skill because none of these are actually worth it, besides maybe this. But then you realize the effect the torpedo damage. So, pretty much worthless. So, just get Will to Rebuild. And uh, let's talk about uh, what else I have on Queen Elizabeth. I run the um, Memorial Day flag because it actually looks good on British ships and also because it has, it has the poppy on it. And that means that um, it's a World War I ship. And I have mostly mount this on all my British ships because it's a perfect flag for it. And so I mount it there. You obviously run spotters. Secondaries on the British ships are meh, but... No, don't brawl with these things. You can brawl with them, but the spotter is more useful. Especially with the accuracy. And of course you do get that gimmick of um, Fire Monkey HE with 35% fire setting chance. Which gets even more ridiculous when you go up the three. Well, until Vanguard just poops off. Armor Piercing, again, this is very useful, especially with Ciliax. You do 11k damage. And let's talk about the upgrades I have. The upgrades, I have aiming systems for the dispersion, and of course the, the secondary battery fire range, but that's, you're not a German battleship. And we have uh, propulsion. You could go for steering gears, but personally I'd go for propulsion, especially with the tier 5 battleships of um, pretty much every single tier 5 battleship being slower than a truck. Probably the notable exceptions might be Ismail, but Ismail is more of a battle cruiser. Yes, it actually is a battle cruiser, it's a board unit class. Uh, so basically just go for propulsion mode, that's what I'm going to say. Damage control could be useful, but the, and even steering gears, but still I'd go for propulsion. And uh, pretty much that's all I have to say about the Queen Elizabeth. The most popular class of uh, British battleships, up there with probably the Nelsons and the King George V, but honestly I prefer this more than the others. Because obviously it holds sentimental value to me, especially the entire two ships of the class. And because of their important roles in both world wars. Especially the War Spite and the Queen Elizabeth. Barham, unfortunately, was sunk by a German torpedo. And Malaya would mostly spend uh, its career protecting convoys. So, uh, thankfully, the Queen Elizabeth class did play a major role as a as the most influential design for a battleship. So that's all I have to say, comrades, and uh, enjoy the gameplay I'm going to roll for you. Okay, so as of me editing this video, I realized that I forgot one crucial part, the armor. Um, Armor-wise on Queen Elizabeth, it may look New Mexico Syndrome, but it actually isn't, because Queen Elizabeth is actually quite tanky. Well, how I play it anyway. Um, um, it actually has a very hard to reach citadel. But it carries over that uh, British stereotype that they can't build anything. So, um, I've always said that a Queen Elizabeth in one ship, and that's Nagato. Because, of course, 110mm citadel is anything. Because you see that step citadel? Yeah, the British are really, very well known for making that. Citadel design, just ask Aldemar or whatever that thing is, I'll cover it soon. Um, uh, very hard to reach Citadel, but uh, it isn't as like wide and chunky as uh, New Mexico or California, or pretty much just any American battleship as a whole. You do have a lot of HE spam on the superstructure though, you're probably gonna get HE spam to the ground because of um, hideous British box superstructure. And um, also you do get the uh, spotter catapult in the middle, which is nice, but still. Um, um, the ship is covered with um, 19 to 25 millimeter plating, especially on the bow. 
And um, the important part is, with Queen Elizabeth, one game I had it very trolly because um, a Normandy kept knocking out my front gun, and it was the same front gun every um, two salvos or so. So prepare for that a lot. Otherwise, Queen Elizabeth's armor is actually fairly good. It's not um, Ismail levels of tanky, or besides the ridiculous citadel that Ismail has, but it's good. Worst part, obviously, is even better, but it's good. Spotter returning to ship.
spotter airborne. Spotter returning to ship. Turret critically damaged. Our team has taken the lead. Turret critically damaged. Spotter returning to ship.
Problem solved, sir.